Hi. Hello. So, hello. We have with us uh, uh, Lina Yadap, the director of Parched. I was really interested in something you said about uh, you wanted to call your film Sex in the Village. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about that, please. So um, basically my journey on part started out with a conversation that I had with my actress Tanishta Chatterjee. And she was talking about some conversations that she had had with these women in the village where they asked her, okay, you're going to be here for a couple of months, so then how are you going to survive? She said, what do you mean? They said, like, without sex. <laughs> so and lots of such uh, conversations and I said, you know, they're so much more candid because I've always felt that we've put sex on a pedestal and built all these mysteries around it, which if we start dropping them, a lot of the sexual frustration will disappear world over. So I said, this is so interesting that these women talk so much more candidly about sex because I realized that for them, their life is so basic. So everything is very basic. So you have sex, you eat food, you go to sleep, you know, you're tired. So I said, let's make sex in the village because I said, let's bombard and make these women talk about sex and just put it out there. Because I haven't seen, I've seen many films of male bonding where men are discussing sex. But what I do experience in my own life where I'm with women and we talk about sex, I've never seen that represented in films. So, um, so then we went and traveled in these villages and had lots of enlightening conversations. I did meet a woman like Rani in my film who was widowed when she was 15 and I could not even imagine what that meant. She was dressed in black for the rest of her life. She just dedicated her life to bringing up her son. And uh, there was a point in that conversation where she held my hand and she said, I haven't been touched in 14 years. Do you know what that means? It took me a while to even process what that is and what is that life. And she behaved like an old woman at 32 like her life is over and I was trying to educate her I said by your age women are not even married most of the time you know your life has just begun so there were these few defining moments and this woman did have a mobile lover <laughs> so I realized oh god you know so they're living this life but technology has done its thing with them so she used to get this call from this strange man and uh, she would blush and you could see a sexual awakening in her. So he was bringing back things which she had denied herself completely. And um, I asked her, I said, why don't you go meet him? And she says, no, what if it turns out to be my neighbor's son or somebody, <laughs> you know? So uh, that was the seed of her character. Then I remember being in this village with like eight to ten women inside a room where we were laughing about like, you know how it is when women get together and we have so much fun. I don't see that represented in films. You know, where we talk about all our troubles and even manage to laugh about them. So I met, I, I was seeing this woman who was laughing the most and she was bruised and that was really disturbing me. At one point I went and asked her, I said, does your husband beat you up? And she said, oh, let's not talk about that. We're having so much fun. That's, you know, that's part of life. And yeah, he beats me, but you know, where, where, where should he take out his anger if, but me? And I said, you know, this is the spirit that I want to capture in my film. It's not going to be a deep, depressing, dark film. Because the spirit of this, these women, which keeps them alive, I wish that spirit made them question and make them, made them a community, made them a support system for each other. Which doesn't happen because again, society has drilled us with lots of conditioning. A, a woman who gets married and gets badly treated by her mother-in-law will still grow up and become a mean mother-in-law and then somewhere in your head you justify it it's okay I also went through it so she can also go through it so we have to stop doing that we have to stop these cycles that have been set in motion for millions of years you know I remember a friend of mine seeing Parched and she was really depressed after the film and I said my film was supposed to leave you with hope. Why are you depressed? She said, because it just struck me. Not only is this film universal, it almost feels eternal. Will this ever change? You know, because we've been doing it for millions of years. What excuse do we have? We said, okay, educate them. Even after being educated, we're still perpetuating the same cycles. So when will this stop? We have to, we have to discuss this and really analyze 
even I am very conditioned by a million ways. So there are a lot of times I say, why am I thinking this way or why am I doing this? And then I say, oh God, this has no reason to exist. This was built in to some way subjugate the women, you know, by a society. So, yeah, I've just rattled off into many directions. But no, okay. yeah, those, those were the reasons that I made Pash. Those were the things that I wanted to bring forth. And for me, Pash was not a blame game of... Oh, the men are the villains and it's about the women. It's both of us. We both have to get together, discuss and get rid of lots of conditioning that has been drilled into us for generations and generations. For me, actually those men are victims who, who live in that, you know, macho society and have to be this man. Prisoners. Yeah, absolutely prisoners. of. Yeah. So they are as much prisoners of the conditioning that we are and I'm sure they suffer as much. At least we've started understanding that women need healing and so we have organizations working on that. I think the men need a lot more healing. They'll be able to drop a lot of their guards and become really humans. So um, so that's that's that those are the kind of discussions I wanted to bring out in Parched. Uh, also I wanted to focus a lot on intimacy and touch. Not not as a sexual act but we are animals and we need that. We need that for survival. We need that to live, to breathe, you know. I, I see people shriveling up because of lack of it. Yeah. And I can almost tell sometimes that, oh my God, this person just needs to be touched and hugged. He doesn't need pills. He needs human touch, you know. So, so there are a lot of those sub-themes which I've tried to use and I will continue to use in whichever film, even if I make a comedy, I will try and address these questions in all my films. So I I watch a kind of a, a few films at the Indian Film Festival, not just women films, but also men films. And what I found there, I was very surprised, is that they give women this kind of, uh, um, it's not even a responsibility, I didn't see uh, I didn't read that as a responsibility, but they see in women the only creatures who are capable to move the world ahead, to change something. It's like it's not they gave up, but they said, okay, let them do this because they can. And I was uh, surprised because men did it in their films. Women did it. so. It's like women have this possibility to change the world in some way, even in their own little community. What do you think about that? I absolutely agree with that because um, so men and women are wired differently. And I truly believe that women are the teachers and nurturers as a strength, as opposed to men do many things better than us. But this is something that we do, we naturally instinctually do I and mean, you see in that in that in the whole animal kingdom actually it's the women who are the nurturers who feed yeah. the child who guide the child the first step you know who won the child don't go here so I think women are the ones who will change the world because they are the first teachers you have as children you know and that's why we need so much more harder to fight fight our conditioning because sadly some of the biggest supporters of patriarchy are women you know, so I think women really need to refine their power and conditioning and their condition and their position within family structures or social structures. And what do you think about uh, this um, kind of awareness about Indian filmmakers to understand that? So it's very interesting, like I try to show in my film, that in a very superficial way women are given the position so especially in this particular community which I am I used for my film that the dowry was paid to the girl but still it didn't translate into how she was treated we pray to 90% of India used to pray to Devi to goddesses but the women are not treated like given that respect so you will go and pray in front of an idol but you won't treat your wife at home the same way you know, uh, so historically, I think, especially in India, 
there is this need to give that respect but it doesn't necessarily translate in everybody's personal lives so maybe that's where you're finding that this voice is there of putting women in these positions of say teachers or people who can change society yeah position okay. of power in some way even yeah. though even when they are uh, uh, subjugated yeah yeah at the end you see that the manipulation of the author behind yeah. is to find a way for that subjugated woman to to, to bring light yeah, to yeah. the surrounding that i think is also a part of the times that we are in right now you know and i'm sure that because as filmmakers they are artists and they are sensitive to 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 times and to the politics and social changes which are happening at that point in time uh so probably even the male filmmakers are are thinking like that um because i think at a very silent level i would like to see it more obviously but women really need to find their position and there is a revolution going on somewhere So sexuality is a kind of the motor of your film, okay? The motor of uh, those lives, those yes. women's lives, and um, and in some way uh, uh, the core, it, the core of your film, but it's always the core of certain important essential films directed or, or, or made by women. And uh, that gave me the idea that uh, through sexuality, it's like in the 70s, the 70s, you know, women uh, uh, um, kind of uh, reappropriate the world through the, uh, liberating themselves. And one of the way it was the sexual way, like, uh, you know, um, not be afraid. In, in, in fact, I think it's about fear, yeah. probably. So, uh, um, w what do you think about that? This theme, the sexuality in your film, how you... It was natural for you, or it was just a kind of a, an idea, that a thought that you put in, in your film, and it, it drove the film? I think for me as a person, and then as an artist, sexuality has always been a very important, um, it, it's, be, it's an important component of anybody's complete personality, you know. Um, and I, I truly believe that your creative powers lie in your sexuality. So I think that needs to be unleashed for everyone. Because, um, so that's the theme that has always, so even if I make a thriller, I'm sure there will be a whole... Um, thing of sexuality. In fact, when I talk to my actors, I tell them that they have to be sexual beings, even if they're like any role that they're playing, because that is a power. Sexuality, I think, is also a huge power of communication that reaches out. That's that's like an energy that goes out. And uh, I think so. It is a big theme with me in everything. I think sexuality is the biggest power we hold inside of us, and it needs expression complete free expression and we so that your protagonist there these three women uh, four the, with the girl with a young girl um, through sexuality they find in some way their selves yes and their freedom yes at the end of the movie yes. so this is a kind of a really powerful thing that you are saying yes yeah because it's it's entwined with everything it's entwined with our self-image of ourselves, it's entwined with the position we hold, you know, in in a micro sense or in a macro sense. I think sexuality, and that and my, that's what my problem is, that we have put such covers on sexuality and given it, um, you know, um, so much of mystery and intrigue and actually taken it almost into a very negative space. Because I think the rapes are also coming from a denial of sexuality not only rapes, all kinds of anger comes from a denial of sexuality. So it is a very important key that all of us individuals has to unleash and find expression. You, you said something like, um, we are the country of Kama Sutra, but we don't have sex. That is, it was connected with censorship. 
because the censorship probably is the power in front of what you are talking yes now. not just censorship as in an organization yeah. but it's self censorship also mm. uh, through the I think in if, if we, are, we, are, we are the country that uh, created and was the land of Kama Sutra look at the freedom of expression of sexuality there was where where did we come now where we're like Shh, no. behind closed doors shut it all down we don't do this this is wrong how did we come here we were so much more progressive when we created a Kama Sutra you know and that's true in our films for the longest time people didn't even kiss and now they kiss but we're not supposed to have nudity it's just a body let's demystify all those things you know Let, let's have real conversations because honestly I think the world is out there there is an internet there is this demon you have unleashed where any material any information can be put so what are we talking about when we say we'll censor this don't talk about this Tomorrow, if I want to, I'll release my film on the internet and a million more people will watch it. So one has to be realistic to the times that we are, we are living in and, and accept technology, what it's done. I mean, it's a demon too. It, it will cause us a lot of harm, which we will see in coming times. But it's also changed the world so much. I mean, 10, 15 years back when I came to America, and I would tell people I'm from India, they'd never even heard of India. You know, so um, now everybody knows about India. So the internet has given us access to just go through a Google map and just check, you know, even see a terrain. So let's acknowledge that and let's use that in a nice way to let's demystify all those things that we have made dirty and horrible, which are so much part of us. You know, we were animals. We were we were like surviving animals who were a community. Let's 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 go back to. Uh, empowering things that we've given up by this stupid kind of conditioning we've subjected ourselves to. Yeah, in fact, your protagonists are like uh, happy. They have uh, a joyous time even though they are living in horrible conditions. And, uh, and through the sexuality, it's like they um, channel their energies the good energies they have yeah. and it, it's like sexuality is that in some yeah. way you know so it keeps them alive yes and sexuality is not just sex as in men with men or men with women or women with women sexuality is also just existence it's existence i can have sexual energies with somebody that i do not want to have sex with or will never have sex with you know it's it's an expression and, and that that shows in anybody and yes um, these girls are very spirited which which actually came from the women that I met in the village like the bruised girl I was telling you about that just because you're having a hard time that doesn't mean you have to just sit down and be depressed for the rest of your life in fact when you're going through a bad time at some level you seek happiness you seek laughter you know and that's the way life is. You cry one day, you laugh the other. It's fine. So you went uh, through the film, you went through a lot of uh, different uh, uh, situations, like, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the domestic rape, for example. The domestic rape is kind of a protagonist in your film. Yeah. It's like whatever we don't know, it's happening, it silently happens. And we, and your protagonists are like, gave up in some way because it's something that's happening every day. So, but at a certain point, uh, uh, they really react when they understand what it is. So there is a kind of uh, hope, always, in your film. Yes. And I think that hope is there. One has to just find that window. It exists in every circumstance, in every situation. Uh, there are women in horrible situations across the world. But they have to question, take the risk. Sometimes women are just scared that, what will I do? How can I walk out of this? I'd rather get beaten and stay. Walk out. 
make those small 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 changes and that will create the bigger change because we keep feeling that oh it's just me who i have no power in the world and what what change can i bring about but believe you believe me that it is the smaller changes that will bring the big change here and uh, about domestic violence it's it's very strange it's this thing that is almost it's okay because it's a husband and wife and it's fine i'm sure those voices went to hearts nearby but nobody came and saved her which is the case even in societies when you people who over here in the neighborhood they a wife and husband shouting and they say oh it's their business let them you know deal with it go and talk to the woman and tell her that there is a world out there that can support her um so don't put it under the carpet the thing is world over we putting it under the carpet and just because it's happening in shut doors it doesn't mean it's not happening people in america in denial that these circums everything that i've shown in my film happens in america we have child marriage you have ch- child pregnancy it's the same thing i mean it it's circumstances are different but it's similar it is very similar the stories are the same you have domestic violence here which is not uh, reported in india probably in the uneducated parts of india where there is no information it's even publicly endorsed but it's the same circumstance it's the same conditioning where women have decided okay that this is my lot and i have to bear with it you said <clears throat> when women are alone in india i think they are very physical um and they touch the t- the touch is very important because it probably is connection right yeah. and um can you talk yeah more about that i think not just women but i think we are much more physical beings at least the way i've grown up i mean if, if whoever we meet we hug them we touch each other when talking to each other you know so there is a lot of touch and it actually got magnified for me when i i stayed in la for over a year in the last two years when i was doing my post production here and i almost went into depression because i had no human contact sometimes for days people would send you emails and sms's and i started craving that touch that because on a daily basis in india i i think hug and touch at least 20 people and i suddenly felt so isolated and alone and the second thing was i stopped eating and then i realized oh my god i miss eating with my hands i miss that touch too and that's why now food is not tasting as good to me so i started cooking indian food and making sure i eat with my hands then i started telling everybody that i work with that please don't sms or email me call me i need to hear a human voice and there's so many people dying of loneliness let's seek each other out let's talk to each other let's touch each other it's very important and yes in india um, so we are very physical we are having a conversation we'll be actually rolling over each other and that's not sexual but it is a part of sexuality it may not be sexual at that moment but it is a part of your because sexuality needs expression and this is one of the biggest expressions of sexuality so um when that was taken away from me it got though i had already used it in my film but it got magnified for me so much more over here so i want to tell people all over the world please touch each other hug each other that connection that you get from heart to heart when you give a good hug there is no pill that can cure you more than that so at a certain point your protagonist have an encounter and uh, where a man in a cave and it was one of the most uh, amazing thing i saw in a film and uh, because it's whatever we imagine or we fantasize uh, or we we want i think as women like this kind of uh, 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 a perfect blend between uh, um sex and love it was represented by that man in that cave that you called the mystic lover <laughs> yes ah <laughs> uh, yes so the thing is if you, when you see the film she's come there to have sex literally and you see it in the way she submits herself and you also not only do you see in the way she submits herself you 
you see the kind of sex she's had for her whole life in the way she lies down and she just surrenders to the man that do what you want with me like literally invade me uh, but this man comes and he honors her actually he says no I'm not here to do that this is an act that we have to be in together let, let, let's find our sense of touch let's 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 uh, you know arouse ourselves and let's do that together this is not a act of just invasion you know this is not just an act let's enjoy it and that's that's what we try to explore and for preparing for that scene in fact we we did a lot of workshops I worked with my choreographer very closely and hats off to these two actors we almost made it like a dance you know so we actually choreographed it like a dance it, it just it was that's how it came and I remember a woman uh, who saw my um, Mary Fine in fact she said that for me for her a, a lot of that came from Jesus like how Jesus washes Mary Magdalene's feet mm. so if you wash especially a des somebody who lives in the desert if you wash their feet you're honoring them because that's the dirtiest part of their body and then the, her interpretation was and then he marries her and I said why would you say that he, she says because he pulled her veil down I said that's such a beautiful interpretation but I didn't do it like that why he pulls her veil down is because she's expecting to just be like you know uh, like her clothes taken off and just get to the act and that's why he says no let's first find the sense of touch let's let's arouse ourselves together so yeah that's that's how that scene was so the mystic lover was uh, this actor yes so mystic lover is a very very respected actor in, in not india in the world over he's he's an amazing not only just an amazing actor but a really beautiful and very very aware uh, human being adil hussein so when i went and offered him this role first he heard the whole story and he had no clue which role i wanted to offer him and then i told him i want you to play this lover in the cave and he was just like really shocked because he had obviously not been offered something like this before and uh, I said but I needed to tell you the whole story so that you know how important this one scene is it is just one scene but the impact of this scene is almost like the heart of the story and uh, he said okay let me just think about it for two minutes because it is out it's an outrageous offer <laughs> but at the end of it he's like yes but when he saw the contracts and his name was Man in the Cave, he was very offended and he says, give me some dignity, call me Mystic Lover. And, you know, we've screened the film in so many countries. There are women in every country looking for this Mystic Lover. 